What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, my name is Mpo, Calvin Mashava. You can just call me MCM. Um, today, I just want to share with you my experience when I was um, overseas, you know, the USA. Um, the culture shocks and all that, you know. It's, it's so interesting that when I went there, it was like a big thing, like woo-ha, even people are hyping, oh, you're going to overseas, even myself. Really, I thought, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna see something that's never been seen before. And it's true, I mean, traveling opens up your mind, opens up your, the way you see things in life, and so yeah. So get your glasses up and begin to say this, look, it's more than big chains, it's more than big watches, it's more than nice things, yeah, it's more than big cribs, it's more than nice whips, we still want those things, though. Let the good times roll, let the good times roll, let the real ones show. Let the real one show, let the real one show, man, let's have it all. Let the good times roll, let the good times roll, let the real one show. Let the real one show, let the real one show, man, let's have it all. Let the good times roll, let the good times roll, let the real one show. Let the real one show, let the real one show, man, let's have it all. It's been over just just over two months that i've been back to south africa and so I've, i just thought maybe it's finally time just to share my experience to share my culture shock interesting things things i never thought i mean i've watched a lot of videos about america we know a lot about america but yeah so the whole time i didn't know what to expect i was just like listen i'm going here i'm excited this is like the most perfect place ever i guess that's what i thought i mean a lot of people were hyping me up in that manner and so some of the things were interesting some of the things that catch a shock some of the things were good some of the things were not so bad but bad i can say but yeah overall it was a good experience i'm glad i went i'm glad i had i, I got an opportunity to go and see a different side of the world live with the people there work there you know wake up every day there so yeah um so yeah Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So one of the first things that I want to share with will be food, you know, the food, the fast food, everything, because that's the first experience I ever got. As I was saying, um, one of the first things when, when I landed in New York, um, I had to order food and I'm thinking, OK, I'm in America and I can order McDonald's. I know McDonald's, even though I would love to see. Uh, what do McDonald's look like that side? But I'm like, okay, what am I thinking? The first thought that I came to my mind is tacos. I mean, I've watched a lot of videos. I've watched a lot of comedians like Trevor Noah talking about tacos. I'm like, listen, I'm going to get myself tacos. Obviously, I've never had a, a real experience in terms of tacos or any Mexican food. And the first thing that clicked in my mind is Taco Bell. I got myself Taco Bell. I'm like, listen, let me do this. Um, I don't know if, because it was the first time eating um, a taco or anything like that, so I, I can't even really remember what I ordered. I think I ordered, um, a, yeah, I, I, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, but yeah, I did try to put some tacos in there, in the order, and yeah, there were tacos, I remember that, and also I had the, um, uh, not the wrap, what you call this? I'll remember just now but anyway so i i order on uber and they ask me large medium i'm like ah, listen i'm gonna be here for a while i'm gonna order another thing i mean i'm using rents in in the u.s which is like not that, that much so i'm like listen large at least i'll have a, a cold drink for the whole day or or soda as the americans say so yeah i did my thing uber it gets there and when it gets there, the large was really large. The large was very really large and it was very really interesting because I'm like, wait, what, what kind of large is this? I mean, they are, what they would say is small is what we call large in South Africa. And that was like, my mind was blown. I mean, this, 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 it was like large. It was large. The large was large. Yeah, so this was not even the large option. This was the standard. They still had a... Uh, large options uh, as xbs that's a big cold over there um they got some wings some fingers toast fries 
like it. like it imagine what jumbo looks like and so it was quite interesting and it was one of the first culture shock that i had and the food that i had at tacos i didn't really enjoy it much i don't know if my stomach was not feeling right but i i remember i didn't have a good experience in my opinion even though i didn't know what tacos supposed to taste like and even a burrito yeah i ordered a burrito i i didn't know what a burrito supposed to taste like i guess uh, but I, I remember i didn't really enjoy it that much i didn't understand the flavors or whatever the case might be i didn't know listen to it i just felt like whatever i'm eating i'm hungry that's it and so fast forward food in, in general throughout the my stay in america I got to experience um, that Mexican became one thing that I, I would take away from America. Yes, it's Mexican, but listen, tacos or Mexican food in, that I experienced in America was like a, the most amazing thing for me. I mean, I like the spiciness, the way they cook everything. I mean, later that I know that I'm gonna, the first restaurant I'm gonna be working at is a, a luxurious Mexican food restaurant. And, I got to learn the flavors, I got to learn how they cook and that's one thing that I took away like in terms of food, I mean, like that was the best. I mean the Mexican cuisine is amazing, not just tacos and I got to learn what actual tacos are and it was nice, it was very really, very interesting, it was very really nice, I enjoyed that. Okay before I get to the next point, uh, in terms of food there are other things that I, I got to uh, try and enjoy and one thing that i found about american food was that they're sweet most of the food they love sweet a lot of things that i love i couldn't find but those that i found they were sweet i mean take one thing like um orange juice and they say 100 percent, but it means 100 percent from concentrate and yeah it's, it's very interesting i mean um the orange juice that i love natural orange juice so my orange juice has to has has uh um, have our pulps and there you pay more if it has pulps which is very quite interesting it's it's it was something else it was interesting i don't understand how it works but it didn't make sense then because i didn't know it was from concentrate i just thought it's a hundred percent juice i'm like i mean it's gonna take more effort to take the pulps out why is it more expensive if it has pulps so it was was something else uh, so yeah the food was quite sweet even the cranberry it was sweet there i mean things are sweet are sweet like the all brand uh cereals that i love in the morning they're sweet everything is just, like most things are sweet let me not say everything yeah uh, their iced tea sweet like they just love sweet things they have sweet tooth i guess and yeah um the milk and uh, it was quite interesting that the more organic milk I wanted, the more expensive it will be. I mean, they had variety of food, uh, of rather options uh, there. Like when it comes to milk, they have all this type of milk. I mean, I love coffee. I drink coffee most of the time. Where every time I will say like, okay, today I'm feeling like a flat white, a flat white. And before they can save you, there is a lot of options. Like, yo, do you want almond milk? The regular milk is okay. Do you want oat milk? There's options. Even when you go to buy, there's there's options, options, options of on milk. Uh, where here, when I just, just say flat white, right, okay, and that's it. Unless I specify, and uh, most places won't have anything else besides a regular milk. They will have like maybe low fat milk, but in general, they won't have um, other options. And there, so those are the culture shock. The interesting when it comes to food. Um, Okay, nothing else comes to mind now. Oh yeah, I had an opportunity to experience the Thanksgiving uh, meal prepared by one of my friends, a mom, DeAndre, and it was amazing. It reminded me of home. It's the, what we call seven colors here in, in South Africa. It's what we eat on a Sunday, and it was it was nice. It was amazing. It was like homey, and it felt like we share some similar things with, in that regards. And so yeah was very interesting it was very interesting yeah but the mexican influence in america in terms of food they said it was shocking for me because i'm like i thought this is america it's not mexico and yeah but i like it i like it um so yeah let's go to the next point uh weather huh so yeah i landed in new york i thought i don't think in new york i didn't spend that much going outside when i got to new york i was tired i mean it was from the flight uh the airport from the airport getting to the 
uh, shuttle to the hotel and I got to see I can't remember what the weather was like I was too tired I was too listen I need to rest I just rested in the morning went back and but the first experience I get to like like the weather to feel the weather was when I landed in Tampa Florida when I landed there um, this this is this bridge or whatever the bridge from the 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 the, the flight to the airport there's it there's somewhere where the the actual air comes in yo it hits me hard like the heat was like and i get into the airport so i couldn't feel anything after that i'm like wait what, where did that heat come from it was very interesting i thought maybe the engines or whatever i don't know the hot i don't know i mean it was also my first time flying so like okay so i get to the airport uh yeah do do the things what i need to do all an uber and as i step outside yo the heat comes back again it was it was hot but it was humid it was not just hot it was hot and humid so the air felt like very thick and it was like i'm like i don't know judging from the tv i thought america would be cold out because even what they say like africa is hot this this I mean, I was expecting this, and that was like a culture shock for me. So from Tampa to uh, took an Uber to Saint Petersburg, um, or Saint Pete, Saint Pete Beach, and I get there. It's, it's, it was just humid. It was very hot. Um, yeah, but the weather was very hot. Like in fact, most of the time you want to stay where there's air conditioning, like inside the car, or inside the house. It was very interesting. I couldn't handle the 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 the, the, the heat. I wanted to walk and see. I did walk and see, but the heat was like something else, or the humidity was something else. And yeah, so in that weather, and from Saint Petersburg, I flew to uh, Savannah, Florida. No, no, Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. My bad. To Savannah, Georgia, and there, that's when I even felt even more, because apparently, I don't know. It was just humid, very humid. I couldn't handle it. Every time I would complain. In fact, I complained. I remember this ladies that. Uh, I was taking over the lease uh, from, and they were, I was like, yeah, I'm like, yo, it's hot. They were like, it's not that hot, it's just humid. I'm like, yeah, but it's hot, girl. Like, I can't handle this. And she looked at me like, boy, are you supposed to be from Africa? Like, that's how the look he, she gave me. And so, yeah, a lot of people would ask me, oh, what you mean is hot? Isn't it hot there in Africa? I'm like, listen, plus I'm from the free state. I'm from the free state. I grew up in the eastern free state. Kids are called called Tabadi Marlo. You understand? Tabadi Marlo means uh, I uh, snowy um, mountains. Just the place where I'm from is not that hot. Even where I am now in Bloemfontein, it's not that hot. Cape Town. I mean, Cape Town is very cold. And Cape Town is cold as compared to places like Devon and stuff. And so when I got there, this the heat. I didn't know this heat. I've been to Devon. I love Devon. Devon is very is the warmest place you can be. But that heat was something else compared to what I know from even from Devon. Um, so it was quite interesting that the weather was something else. And um, what else? I wanted to experience the snow, but I couldn't. I couldn't experience the snow. I didn't during December time where it was like it's cold. It's winter there, and it's um, snowing some parts. Remember, I'm in Georgia, um, and it's warm there. It's 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 kind of it's warmer than like it doesn't miss snow that much where I was like in fact it doesn't snow let me say that it doesn't snow I I feel like I experienced winter only for two weeks which was in January that's it the rest was like just okay it was like oh yeah this is a nice weather even during the winter time so I couldn't and it was peak so I couldn't take time off work I had to work so yeah. I, didn't, I couldn't go to a place where there's snow because I want to experience that. Um, so yeah, that's it with the weather and the language. So when I left this place, South Africa, they told me, listen, Mpo, learn English because you're going to United States. Well, I could speak English, but I mean, if you, I don't use it that much, so they were like, you got to learn it now, be, be good at it because you're going to be using this language to communicate the whole time. This is me putting it work, learning English from, like I've been learning English, focusing you, my English has to be good, I mean, I'm gonna be communicating with these guys, you know. And I get there, and the people there that I get to interact with on a daily basis don't speak English. They speak something like English. Yes, I work in a Mexican restaurant, which, yeah, 
Mostly was the accent, yeah, and the English was like, ah, but most was the accent. But even the Americans, like, especially the black Americans, like, huh? The whole time I was like, what are you saying? What are you saying? I mean, there's this guy called Dequan. I, most of the time I had no idea what he said. He would speak to me, and I would like, like, wait, what are you saying? What is, third time I'm like, okay, I can't be asking you what he said. I have no idea what you're saying, so what is he saying? And they would explain to me, oh, no, he's saying one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm like, which language do you speak? I know, English. Which English? <laughs> so, yeah. But there was a guy uh, called DeAndre again. Um, so DeAndre could speak like that. that the way Dequan would speak. But he could come back and speak the way I would understand. But there are certain things uh, that is changed, obviously. Obviously, the language, depending on where you are, would change. So, like, things like, they would tell you, yo, Calvin, let me hold something. Wait, what do you want to hold, bruh? They're just asking for money. And, yeah, the, the use of language, it was very really quite interesting. Like, the things that I would make blow my mind. I remember this lady, an old African-American uh, lady, someone was like, oh, hey, Miss Whoever, you look tired. It's like, yeah, I is. I is very tired. I'm like, wait, what? What, what are we saying? I thought I had to learn English. I was fine with the way I spoke English. I felt like I was gonna fit in just fine. Now I'm out here and I have no idea. I'm like, I wasted my time speaking English and most of the time I interact with Mexican or people from uh, Colombia or foreigners. And so, yeah, we had to figure out and understand each other. But trust me, we, we hardly spoke what was the right English. So yeah, um, yeah, that's it with the language. I can't think of anything else. If I do, I'll come back to it. And uh, from the language, I'm gonna go to driving. Uh, I had an opportunity to drive when I get there. Yeah, it's not a culture shock that, for me, it was not really a culture shock that I have to drive on the other side. I was kind of like prepared, excited, willing to experience driving on the other side. What shocked me is, so I rented a car and I drove from Savannah, Georgia, to Miami and on my way there I'm like oh listen let me get to the food station or the, the gas station as American would say and you know put some gas in the car pump some gas and I get there and I waited for a while I don't know if I waited for a while for, for a minute or so I don't know I waited for a while and I got annoyed because there's no one coming to assist me to pump the gas into my car I was so pissed off like I was I'd rather not pissed off but irritated. I'm like, wait, what kind of service is this? I thought this is America supposed to be crazy and stuff. What, what, what kind of this? And then as I opened my door and th it clicked, I think I remember seeing somewhere there are no, um, uh, what we call petrol attendant or gas station attendant. You have to do it yourself. So that was a culture shock. I'm like, wait, what? I have to pump my own gas? So I had to figure out the machine here. Yeah. At some point I was able to figure it out and stuff, but that was like a shocking thing. I'm like, I'm so spoiled here in South Africa that I just stop the car there. I don't have to get out of the car. Everything happens right there. I mean, they wash my window. Oh yeah, and if you wanna um, put air into your tires, in America, they, you don't find it at every uh, thingy, next to the pumping thing, man. There's only one spot there and you pay for it. Here it's free. You just, you can just pull up even without putting gas into your car. Just do the thing. And there you have to pay for it. I'm like, wait, what? And there's only one there. It's not everywhere. It's like, it was mind blowing really. It was like shocking. Like I thought, wait, what is this? And so yeah, yeah that was a very interesting to drive in there and but the driving was the same, other, rather, other than like I drive on the other side, that's it. And everything was the same. Most of the rules are similar. Oh yeah, and it's not not cut shocking, but was, it was challenging that I, they, everything is in miles there where I'm used to um, kilometers. And so I had to figure out what miles are, what's the distance of miles and stuff and feet, you know, yeah, but it was very interesting. It was very nice to try that. Uh, uh, yeah, to try there. And yeah, 
speak of driving this is not really me driving but it was a nice experience to experience being inside a tesla and yeah it, it was like i don't know it's like something else i just wished tesla can come to south africa so the next thing housing and architecture so housing um so i stayed i stayed in a place like i would say it's a ghetto if i can say that and before that i stayed in a very luxurious if i can put it that way uh student apartments if i can say that with swimming pool and all that but most of the houses there especially inside is divided with uh what do you call this hardwood no it's not hardwood there's a name for it drywall something like a drywall i would call it drywall i guess but thing is if you're on the other side i can hear you things like clearly 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 like it's it's like divided by cardboard in my opinion because uh, i'm not used to that i mean here in south africa uh we have a wall which you hardly hear someone on the other side where there was something else so that was a catch tricky like it felt like a, i'm in a cheap house so i'm not in the real house and it was tricky because i thought i'm coming to the first wall and i felt like we have better quality, but this is just in my opinion, my better quality housing. And yeah, it was, it felt like I had, well, if it, when you walk sometimes, like where I stayed, it's like, goes like, it's like wood, unless I, ex except in the apartments rather. Um, yeah, there it was fine because I mean, I, I guess they're using um, concrete and stuff, but the houses was very interesting. The houses were very interesting. And you know, the architecture there, um, some places would look very beautiful like architecture in atlanta when i first arrived i think within two months three months when i was there um the only thing that i got to experience was shooting like the shooting there is like crazy people when they argue they would take out guns and start shooting at each other or whatever but the shooting there is like it was crazy there were two or oh, three shootings already and the two people people I actually worked with in the Marriott and I didn't get to meet them but they worked there and the other guy I don't know who it was but there were three shootings next to where I work at the gas station and that was that's was one of the biggest crime I would say that is shocking to me because everyone has a gun there especially in Georgia um where i was everyone has a gun i know in texas the same but everyone has a gun and they love their guns and they just buy their guns like you buy whatever at the shop i mean no licensing or anything and it's just shocking the amount of guns but what i like on the bright side is that there's no one who's there to to rob you on the street or mug you, you know you can nothing will happen i used to walk at night yeah i'll be scared because my instinct being from south africa it's like yes if i'm working like this too hard like this they're gonna be two guys showing up whatever you know take my phone whatever but that was never the case um no pe people don't get robbed there i've never heard of anyone getting robbed i've never get robbed i've walked many times and i stayed in the ghetto and people just screamed me and didn't care who i was i mean i don't know they just just assumed i'm like one of them i guess i don't know and I had something also interesting for my guy. I was explaining, like, oh, there's no crime here. I like that. No one bothers you, even in the ghetto. I was like, no one bothers me, and I'm, I'm in the ghetto. And DeAndre said to me, like, yo, yeah, but no one will bother you because you are a foreigner. Like, what does that mean? It's like, no, we don't bother foreigners. Like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I would assume for really you bother actually for someone as a, a foreigner, like in South Africa, when they you come from America, they will assume you have money and you actually will be a victim of being robbed. And it's like, no, here yeah, we even, it's not really robbery. We, we will just try to hustle each other because we think you're from the other side or whatever, uh, especially if you're American. But the moment we hear that you're not even uh, American was just like ah, no just leave him alone he, he, he doesn't know our things it's fine it, I was still confused but yeah was right very interesting very shocking uh, yo the, so the crimes I didn't really experience that much and um, I've I've been to Atlanta and they tell me there's crime there but I stayed in the good parts in, in Atlanta downtown area tourist areas uh, the fancy areas um, I've never been to a ghetto sites um, 
I've experienced a, a crackhead in Atlanta who just uh, stole something from the gas station, but yeah, it was just a crackhead. It's, that's not that was not dangerous. I'm from here, from South Africa. I know danger. I've I've almost got robbed a couple of times. So yeah, so yeah, that that's the the, the shocking, but it's the good shocking. I just hate the guy, the the, the gun violence. Then that's it. Uh, but I didn't experience personally. Personally, I'm sad for that reason. But yeah, I've seen a lot of guns when I was there. Played with a lot of guns, shot a lot of guns. Oh, not a lot, but I just shot a shot few guns. And yeah, people. Um, let's talk about the people there and Ubuntu. Now, in South Africa, we have what we call Ubuntu. And I thought recently, because I stay in the suburb, people are not nice. But I went to America and I realized most people are not nice, especially if they don't know you, people are not nice. Yeah, when they get to know you and they consider you a friend, they will be good for to you. But in general, people are like, I don't know, robots in a way, and they don't have that sense of Ubuntu, even they don't sense when someone is being tuned and actually need help, like, ah, we don't care. It's, it's like they're saying we've been hassled too many times, we don't wanna, I don't know. But I, I sense that there's lack of Ubuntu. Uh, there are people that I experience Ubuntu with, especially when I worked we were in a certain restaurant, a pizza restaurant or Italian restaurant. And they, yeah, people were very much more nicer, closer, and they had what I would say it's a sense of Ubuntu, especially even the the leader there or the 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 the, 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 the chef who was who was in charge of us, obviously. And I felt like this Ubuntu from her and stuff. She's a hardcore, but she had. That sense of Ubuntu and so but most of the time I didn't get it to experience that. But I met nice people, don't get me wrong, I get I met nice people. I've get free, I've got like free, free stuff from a lot of shops. I mean when I was in St. Pete the first day I went to this Cuban restaurant to try some food and I'm like, Oh where are you from? I explained I'm from somewhere, I'm here for one, two, three, and I'm like ah oh, I get free stuff. So I would get a lot of free stuff like just like that. And yeah. It was it was quite interesting. Uh, in terms of sense of Ubuntu, I'm not going to say much about the people there. Um, yeah, but I have made great friends. Um, I've met a lot of nice people also. Um, the lifestyle, the everyday lifestyle. Um, here, the everyday lifestyle is I didn't really cook much at home uh, because it was cheaper for me, especially because I was alone. It was cheaper for me to buy um, takeouts. It was just cheaper. That was just cheaper as compared to me saying I'm gonna buy clothes. There's some time I like, I wanted to cook and I would cook, but most of the time I just ordered takeouts and my lifestyle was just like that. Um, I used Uber a lot. I walked, but I used Uber a lot as well. And um, yeah, so that's the kind of lifestyle that I had to live there. Um, it's yeah, it was shocking in terms of the food. Thing it was that was that was like interesting for me, and um, I was in Georgia, and the area was is it's, it's more of a tourist area, so it's more relaxed. A lot of people there are relaxed, not in a hurry to go anywhere, uh, so it's much chill. I mean, a lot of drinking that happens there. I mean, like at one p.m. already you see people already getting drunk, already. Like it was quite interesting and. The lifestyle in terms of entertainment, um, yeah, there was not much to do there, but they have a lot of bars, and by bars I mean actual bar, like where you sit at the bar and talk to the bartender and talk to the people at the bar. Who, you know, it's that's something that I've never experienced here in South, in South Africa, and I, I enjoyed that. I liked that. I liked interacting. You'll go alone, and you don't know anyone, but you'll you have fun talking to people and sharing stuff and it was very very interesting in terms of that people talk to each other at the at the bars and yeah it was very nice and it's just sitting at the bar and just talk to people and yeah so yeah that was the very interesting part of it and um, the general lifestyle is is quite I would say it was expensive for me in terms of um, I rented um, a room just a room. Yes, I could use the, the, the kitchen, but with the person I'm sharing uh, the house with. So I use the kitchen, 
and the lounge and the bathroom we shared the bathroom but i had i rented a room and for a room i paid 550 dollars which was a lot but before that the place i stayed in for a room i was paying 1200 dollars yeah 1200 dollars you know, it didn't make sense to me uh, for a room it's, it's a lot i mean imagine what i could do with that here in south africa in terms of renting out the house i could rent a house a very nice house actually in a in a very good suburb uh, but yeah, there was for roommate, but the lifestyle is like that. There a lot of people rent rooms. Like when say, my roommate, it doesn't mean they were friends or anything. They just, I need a room, you need a room, or I need a roommate. And it's a, it's a everyday lifestyle. People will have a two bedroom uh, apartments, but will rent out a room and they'll share like that. And it's so normal, it's so, it was very interesting because here I've never seen if people don't just rent out their room here. and strangers it, it was it was it was interesting it was it that kind of lifestyle was interesting but it's expensive i understand why they had to do that but it was interesting i like that i like that uh a lot i just don't like the pricing that's it so in terms of that as expensive at some point in my life i paid um sharing remember i paid 200 dollars for electricity and water it was that was a lot didn't make sense to me but yeah it was during winter i had to turn the heat on and uh, like i said the temperature there in terms of in, in in summer rather um it's very humid and very hot so every place there has air conditioning unlike in south africa every place there has air conditioning yeah, we open windows there you open a window you'll die so <laughs> i mean in summer so there's air conditioner and during winter because it gets cold there's heat the air conditioning then the heat whatever so um yeah that's that's interesting i like it but i also don't like it because i like opening windows fresh air every morning and so yeah they hear the, the temperature is not crazy so when it's hot it's hot but it's not hot you can still open the your room will be nicely regulated in terms of heat and stuff and yeah uh yeah so that was that was really interesting the lifestyle is quite interesting um i like getting paid in dollars uh every me get paid every second week and so i don't have to wait for month and uh every second week i have money so there's a lot of uh purchasing power uh for consumers there so and they end up buying interesting things that they don't need because i mean there's access to money they have purchasing power like i said so yeah that, that that's what i like in terms of uh, the lifestyle there but some of the things i didn't really enjoy much uh, i missed the home i wanted to come home some things didn't make sense but yeah um so that's the lifestyle yeah they, i already touched on the bars and clubs uh so the shopping malls <laughs> in savannah i'm from i'm from the free state i'm from the eastern free state but now i stay in bloomfontein and we have nice mall we have the waterfront mall we have the mimosa mall where you go inside the mall and it 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 it, it looks very really nice some malls have um uh, like grocery stores they have cinemas inside um gaming area a uh, food or whatever yeah and they like the malls they look a bit sad as compared to the ones as, as i've seen here it's like ha huh, how is this possible i thought i'm coming to america so in my head america all of it I just paid it with one brush all of it is the best so yeah but i was in savannah georgia and I, okay i've been to miami i've been to i, I didn't look for a mall in miami though but i've been to miami i've been to uh, st pete i've been to um uh, jacksonville um atlanta washington charlotte but i haven't found a mall that looks anything like the ones we have in south africa i feel like we have the best shopping malls as compared to what i've seen i've experienced remember i didn't travel all of america just the part i've traveled i didn't i couldn't find a mall like that a lot of the most is in savannah georgia where i spend most of my time um it's like outdoor it's like just outdoor and it's just shopping and yeah there's food and that's it it's not as beautiful as or glamorous as what we have here and i'm from a small town bloomfontein in fact where i'm from bethlehem i grew up in bethlehem Quarko. and the malls there i'm telling you 
they're better than the ones I saw. Maybe that's just my opinion or my, my, my taste. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess maybe in LA somewhere they have nice or in, 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 in New York, maybe they do have. I don't know. But yeah, I was very really disappointed by the shopping malls there. Very really disappointed. I was like, we what what's happening? Where am I? I thought this is the first world, not a third world. Yeah. And so uh yeah, that's the shopping mall. And one of the things that I got to experience is what we call IKEA and it, when i'm talking about shopping akia is a furniture store and a uh, furniture general home store if you can say that but they, it's staged like when they say we're selling this bedroom stuff this everything is staged everything is for sale they have everything that you have in a the bedroom they have a, if they sell in kitchen everything but everything is on sale even sometimes when you open the cupboards um there's actual food that's for sale like it's staged it's beautiful it's i don't know now i wish that i wish i could take and bring it here back here to south africa um yeah so yeah so overall the experience there was was amazing i missed home a lot but it was amazing and yeah i would visit i would love to visit over and over again and um, but yeah certain things were very expensive <laughs> and some of things were very affordable the food, the booze is very affordable, and yeah, it was it was a quite interesting experience for me. And um, yeah, I've been to Richmond, and it was very interesting to see the architecture there. Yeah, in Richmond, it's Richmond. Yeah, I think it is. But the architecture there was beautiful. I I enjoyed being there, and yeah, Washington was nice. Um, Washington was nice because I met people there who like um, I don't want to say other people are not smart but there it's, I feel like I met smart people because they were like oh, where are you from? Are you, are you from South Africa? Did we get it right? I'm like yeah 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 it's like oh yeah I have a friend and they actually know about uh, Africa and South Africa they have more knowledge as compared to where I was in Savannah Georgia where most of the time like well accent where are you from? I'm from South Africa South Africa oh which part in South Africa and I'll be like what do you want me to say? Like, I'm from a city called Bloemfontein. No, I mean, like, um, the country. It's called South Africa. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I have a friend in Ghana. And there's a nice place there. She also showed me that. So I know Africa is very developed. Yeah, I've seen the Ghana. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I've never been to Ghana. Oh, you've never been to Ghana? Yeah, no. Never been to Ghana. Wait, how, how come? Why? It's too far. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. So in their head it's like Ghana, South Africa, it's all things. Yeah, I don't know which. Oh yeah, this other guy was like um, Nigeria. I don't know if it's part of uh, South Africa, but I'm like, yeah, you don't know much, and they don't know much. I mean, I had uh, interesting arguments at work with the guy who was telling me that uh, in South Africa there's a there's still a village or a lot of villages that are not so developed that. We just, we, the, the village, there's animals roaming, like wild animals just roaming around, like where? It's like in South Africa, I'm like, there's no such a thing. And the only animal, wild animals we find, they're inside um, uh, a game drive or game resort or the thing, inside that. It, and they were like, no, no, I'm telling you, I know. Maybe you don't know. I'm like, so you've never even left the state of Georgia, but you're telling me that where I'm from, I don't know, and you know, no, I know because I watched a documentary made by who? American? It's like, no, but that guy was in Africa and he was showing it. I'm like, listen, there are no ro <laughs> uh, animals roaming around with us or anywhere in the village if they are wild. It's inside a resort or a game or tribe or whatever. No, no. And he had to Google it. I'm like, I'll oh, Google it, no problem. He did, and it's like, you see, this area, I'm like, yeah, this is a, a game drive or a, 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 yeah, a resort or something like that. I, I think it was a resort. And it's like, ah, but I don't see any fences. You say that it's fenced. I'm like, how small do you think this thing is? You're not going to see a fence from all angles. Duh. And I don't know how small they think. I don't know. They think it's very really small. When I say it's gated, you see the gate there. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. It was quite interesting, like, okay. 
So the people in Georgia, people in Florida, we're not that I've met, uh, we're not the brightest. Most of them, not everyone. They're people who are very smart, actually. So yeah, but in Washington, I like the fact that they were more, they had more knowledge, rather. And the conversation was different. It was more like trying to understand, like, unlike, oh, the Uber driver in Georgia this other time was like, congratulations, man, you speak English so well. It's for a guy who's from Africa. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. So yeah, that's my story. Um, I'm, with, I'm, 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 I'm gonna share more. I'm gonna share more my experiences. I'm gonna put videos together of uh, things that I did there. And yeah, we're gonna explore more. And there's a lot of, I'm gonna explore the food and everything, I'm gonna talk about the food. I'm gonna get some of the snacks. We're gonna experience that with you and tell you what I think of the sweet, everything's sweet there. Uh, yeah, the the sweets where well, they don't call them sweets, they call them candies. Uh, so yeah, everything, everything. Uh, I'll explore with you. Oh yeah, oh, speaking of food, I forgot this part. Um, so when I left this, I, I, I'm not a fan of Starbucks. I love coffee a lot, so I thought like the Starbucks there would be better. No, it was not. Let's say disappointing. And McDonald's where I was. It looked very dodgy, didn't look like most of the McDonald's that I get to visit may be not so nice. The standard here in South Africa is very really high, guys. Like, I'm not joking, the KFC, the, the McDonald's, the standard is very high. And even what told, they told me is the luxurious hotel. I slept in luxurious hotel, I mean, I worked for the Mario, so I had opportunity. But when I compared to the standard to what I know from here in South Africa, I slept in a lot of hotels in South Africa. The standard is very high. It's, they're much, much cleaner, it's much more... Listen, the standard is high here. And I said this to someone who was from um, India. They're like, yeah, this is shocking because even in India, it's the same thing. You go to a hotel, it, the standards are very high as compared to that. It's like they're, more, they're too relaxed. As I promise you, if the people from America come and see our McDonald's, they were like, wait, what? What kind of McDonald's is this? It's clean, it's the standard, yo. So yeah, that, that's shocking, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. Um, you know, like my video, uh, share some comments with, uh, tell me what you wanna know, what more. And yeah, soon I'll be sharing on how, what kind of visa I went and how did I go to America and will I recommend it and how can you, if you're interested to, how can you go there as well, the way I, I went and what are other options that I know, yeah, so yeah.